The fight for reproductive justice continues with the recent Alabama ruling determining that embryos are now considered children. Experts believe fertility treatment prices will rise as a result. However, there could be a solution with the help of AI. Today's guest is Daniela Gilboa, the co-founder and CEO of a new fertility tech company called AIVF. AIVF uses artificial intelligence to enhance the chances of a successful embryo transfer, hoping to make IVF a more accurate and accessible process for women everywhere. Well, Daniela, you are the co-founder and CEO of AIVF, which is a rapidly growing medical tech startup that's changing fertility as we know it. Tell us about AIVF and how the idea came about. Yeah, so hi, everyone. Thank you for having me. Um, so AIVF is a, is a, is a startup that's uh, set to democratize and optimize IVF treatments. I'm an embryologist. An embryologist is a, an IVF biologist. So I've been practicing um, embryology for about 15 years prior to IVF. Um, and basically we figured, and, and I think this is something that I was, uh, I, I felt the pain uh, working in IVF uh, clinics and, and meeting with uh, many patients that it should be, and it could be much better, much optimized um, process, uh, shorter time to pregnancy, less money to pregnancy and higher success rates. And you could do that with um, applying AI technology that brings standardization to the market, to, to the way we evaluate embryos, to the way we make decisions uh, through the IVF process. And, and this is really um, the next generation of, of how we do. Um, IVF. And using artificial intelligence can be beneficial in the embryo transfer process. How exactly. does it help doctors choose the best embryos for IVF and how can that also lead to a successful pregnancy? So what we usually do without any um, AI technologies is that we have embryologists and embryologists are IVF biologists um, trained on, you know, um, hundreds uh, hours of embryo evaluation or thousands of hours of embryo evaluation. And this is really the way of, of uh, selecting which embryo is, is uh, right for transfer. And the million dollar question in IVF is which embryo becomes a baby. Um, and the way we do it is, is actually evaluating each and every embryo and, and trying to figure out which one has the best potential to implant. And this is very hard for the human mind, uh, the human, sorry, the human eye. Um, and so we do it with the limited, um, uh, I would say, uh, success. Um, and applying AI technology that is trained on millions of embryos, not thousands and not hundreds of thousands, but millions of embryos. And the AI models are actually able to recognize or identify different, feature, different features in the developing embryo that are correlated with different outcomes. So at the end of the day, we come up with what I call a digital embryologist that um, the AI is um, analyzing the embryos and are able, is able to identify and predict which embryo has the most potential to become a healthy baby. Um, and at the end of the day, it's not that the AI is making any decisions. It's always the doctors and the embryologist. But now we actually have a tool to help us do a better decisions through you know, data and not subjective human analysis and bias and noise that at the end of the day, it always brings to um, mistakes, errors, and you know, success, um, lower success rates. So now we actually have a tool uh, for optimization um, of IVF. Well, one in every five U.S. married women is unable to get pregnant after a year of trying. But for many, the IVF process is overwhelmingly expensive. It can be very taxing on the body, and it can take an average of three to five treatments to achieve pregnancy. So how does that differ with AIVF? So thank you for asking that. And yes, the the agony and and of, of IVF is is um, is awful. Um, and I know I've I'm talking to so many patients, and the fact that most patients talk to talk about um, uncertainties of the process. Like you start and you don't know how long it will take you and how how much it will cost and 
where you will be at the end of the process. So this, so I think reducing the uncertainties is crucial. Um, and so this is what we do. This is what AIVF does, and 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 I'll explain. Um, so most of the the failures of IVF or the the lack of standardization and, and the, the lower success rates are mostly due to the subjective human analysis. And it is what it is, we're humans, we're biased. And so um, evaluating embryos uh, by us, by humans, and you know, we're extremely domain, ex the domain experts. I consider myself as, you know, deep dom as, as domain expert, but at the end of the day, um, it is what it is. And, and, and so if an average, um, you said one in five uh, need IVF and, and the average journey takes about uh, five cycles, AIVF can reduce it to 1.6 on average. And this is crucial. Why? Because we reduce the uncertainties. We take out the human, we take out of the loop, the human subjectivity and it's just more accurate and optimized because you don't have the, the failures or the, the human errors, the human mistakes um, that just happen because we're humans. Uh, so this is what the AI brings to the, to the table. And one of the biggest challenges within the IVF sphere is that the demand is growing rapidly, but the supply is extremely limited. And you talk about how using AI can speed up the process. So will that ultimately expand supply? Yeah, uh, and th that's a good question. So what we see today happening, and it's a global problem, IVF, is that again, demand is growing for different reasons, because we can freeze our eggs, uh, because we, can, we want to delay childbirth, uh, we want to pursue career, uh, new families, um, uh, Preventive, uh, preventing genetic diseases. So all that goes into um, the need for IVF. And then the supply is stock is limited. Um, so applying AI technologies and automation could, automation could unstuck these clinics and help them do uh, more cycles as an in increased capacity. So you take a clinic, you take a clinic, you help them um, uh, with with uh, um, efficacy, as in higher success rates, and efficiency, as in optimizing the workflow. So at the end of the day, you make them scale. So this opens uh, the market to more and more and more patients needing IVF. And although AI helps to optimize the embryo selection process, it's not intended to replace doctors, right? Never. The AI is a tool um, for better decision making, but at the end of the day, it's always the domain expert. It's either the embryologist or the doctor that makes the decision. And in fact, I always say that the best performance comes with working together. So the embryologist and the doctors working together with these new systems as AI systems and that this gives the best performance, but it's never ever um, uh, intend to be a decision maker. The the human, the you know, the domain expert, the embryologist, and the doctor are the ones making the decision, always. And we should mention that the AIVF technology is currently in Europe, Southeast Asia, and South America. When can we expect it in the U.S.? Oh, so soon. It's like a matter of uh, about weeks. And reports have shown a 30% increase in IVF success rates with the use of AIVF. But like any new advancements, of course, there will always be concerns and pushback. What are some of the current concerns, would you say, among the medical community in using AI during the IVF process? Ethical considerations when we talk about incorporating AI to... Um, to, med to medicine or any medical practice um, is important for us as domain experts to discuss what are the, the ethical uh, boundaries um, and the fact that we need to understand as domain experts that uh, the AI models were trained on huge amount of data, heterogene heterogeneity of the data um, to prevent any uh, bias um, so this is very important. So us as doctors and embryologists, um, we need to understand 
how the AI was trained and need to know uh, to ask the, the right questions. And at the end of the day, um, really set the boundaries of what we want to do and what we're not going to do with these um, systems, but um, it's up to us as, as doctors uh, and embryologists. Well, this is fascinating technology. Thank you so much for talking with us about it, Daniela. Thank you so much.